Joan Davis Show. I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show. Starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. chairman of the Historical Archives Committee. <laughs> Look, all the girls sign their names. Oh, wonderful. Well, Miss Natalie, Helen, Herman. Herman? <laughs> Lawrence's husband. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes, Alice, she's right here. It's for you, Joan. Alice Tucker, she's chairman of that horrible play that the club is giving. It's a real turkey. I saw her rehearse it. I know what she wants. She probably wants me to go out and sell tickets. Well, I'm just not going to do it. I promised Brad that I wouldn't do any extra club work. I'm not even going to go and see the play. If there's anything that I can't stand, it's amateur theatricals. I'm going to have absolutely nothing to do with it. Besides, Alice is an awful pest. <laughs> Hello, Alice, dear. <laughs> yes, I know. You're calling about the play. Well, you see, I promised Brad, and I could... Huh? You want me to play the lead? Well, what about Jane? She's been rehearsing. I thought that... Hmm? Oh, laryngitis. Well, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> Say, we're all going to have to get behind this thing and sell a lot of tickets, aren't we? Oh, yes, I... I'll rush right down and get the script, dear. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, you have the costume and wig ready also? Well, that'll be fine. Goodbye, sweetie. Jeez. Me playing the lead? Gosh. Joan. Golly. Joan. Gee, Tallulah. What is it, darling? <laughs> How can you be in the play? You promised Brad you'd give up club work. Oh, but this is different. I I'm playing the lead. Oh. And it's a perfect part for me. I play the part of Gwendolyn, a beautiful but scheming brunette who is... Brunette? I wear a wig. Who is very tall and statuesque. Very and tall? I wear platform shoes. <laughs> Who have this voluptuous figure who simply... Voluptuous figure? Uh, please, Vera, stop interrupting, dear. Now, you come over and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> you see, I'm married to Noel, a fabulously wealthy man who simply bores me to death. I also have a boyfriend, Roger, who is after me for Noel's money. So, I divorce Noel after getting his money, and I marry Roger, who becomes a bigger bore than Noel, who becomes my boyfriend because he is after me for Roger's money, which used to be Noel's. Then I meet, um, Cecil. Who's Cecil? Nobody. I just want to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> Hiya, girl! Yes, hello, Joni. <laughs> Wonderful news, Joan. Oh, it's just a club play. It isn't much. <laughs> uh, you know, the last week or so, there's been a rumor that Dean Gilmore, he's the dean of the State University Law School up north, has been trying to decide whom to invite to address the graduating class. It's uh, quite an honor, you know. Oh, that's wonderful. And I have wonderful news for you. I'm Gwendolyn. Oh, well, that's fine, honey. Now, this afternoon, he called me and invited us to have dinner tonight with him and his wife. Oh, that's nice. You see, in this part, I play a socialite who is very sophisticated. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's good. Now, I actually haven't been invited to address the class yet, but I can tell you this. The fellow who spoke to the class last year, today, is a federal judge. Bully. <laughs> you see, my husband, Noel, is a federal judge. Brad, how wonderful. When are you going to get the appointment? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, honey. Not, not, not quite so fast. He hasn't asked me yet. <laughs> But I, inviting us to dinner is a very good sign. Now, I particularly want you to make a good impression on Mrs. Gilmore. The dean is uh, somewhat uh, influenced by her. Oh, he's henpecked, huh? <laughs> now, don't you dare to suggest a thing like that in front of them. Oh, I won't, dear. I'll be on my very best behavior. <laughs> well, you'd better, because I don't want anything to go wrong. Absolutely nothing. 
Now, uh, money is no object. I uh, want you to look your best tonight. Wow! <laughs> your very best. <laughs> really want you to look beautiful tonight. <laughs> oh, I've got a million things to do. First, I've got to get a shampoo and a facial and a manicure and pick out a lovely hat. Oh, what am I going to do about picking up the script and the costume and the wig? Oh, don't worry, darling. I'll pick those things up for you. Oh, thanks, Aunt Mary. You're a real doll. That'll give me more time to choose just the right hat. Brett, I'm so happy. You're going to be a federal judge, and I'm going to be Gwendolyn. <laughs> yes, sir. A federal judge. Gosh, won't Gwendolyn be proud of me? <laughs> Gwendolyn? can't make up my mind. I don't know whether to take this hat or this. Oh, I think the one you bought looks just lovely on you, madam. But I never thought I could wear a wide brim. Nonsense. You have the perfect face for a wide brim. Really? I always thought I had an off-the-face face. <laughs> oh, if my dinner party wasn't so... Excuse me. One of my out-of-town customers. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gilmore. May I help you? Yes, Elena. I want something very cocktailish. We're night clubbing tonight, the Dean and I. I think I have just what you like. Some lovely things came in just yesterday. <laughs> hmm. You don't mind. May I have the hat back, please? Well, I have just as much right to try this hat on as you. You can't put a hold on a hat just because you feel like it. Uh, do you have a deposit on it? No, I don't. Well, then stop acting as if you own it. <laughs> well, I mean, after all. But I do own it. Because until a hat is bought and paid for, any customer... <laughs> I said I own it. I came in here with it, and by heaven, I'm leaving with it. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, please forgive me. I feel so... Foolish. That is quite all right. You start with these, dear. I'll see what else I can find. Thank you, Helena. <laughs> what are you doing with my purse? Your purse? Why, I must say you have your nerve rummaging through another person's possessions. What is the matter with you? Now, hold on there. I don't rummage through other people's belongings at all. This happens to be my purse. I left it right here. Or did I leave it right here? <laughs> you see, they're very much alike. They must have come from the same alligator. Here, I'll put all your stuff back. <laughs> Well, it, it was an honest mistake, you know. It could happen to anyone. <laughs> People you run into these days. <laughs> I had the hat first. Oh, no, you didn't. I picked it up just the same time that you did. The sales lady brought this hat especially for me to look at. Oh, she did? Yes, she did. Now, will you please let go? Oh, you! Well, I'm awfully sorry. It was an accident. You fool, I... you, you maniac! 
Now, wait a minute. First, you try to steal my own hat. Then you go through my purse. Then you smash me in the face. How dare you? Now, wait a minute, lady. You must be losing your head or something. I wouldn't do this. Of all the... Uh, the you! Well, that's the way the kid wants to play. State Law School, would he? He most certainly would. Here, give me a good one. With pleasure. Thank you. Hello, Joan. This is Brad. Oh, hello, Brad, darling. Look, honey, I just have a second. I just called to tell you it'd be a change of plans for this evening. Seems Mrs. Gilmore had an accident. Really? Was it serious? Oh, no, nothing like that. Some woman attacked her in a hat shop. Oh, that accident. Huh? Uh, nothing, nothing. Oh, well, she'll be a little late, so I'm going to call for them at their hotel, and you'll have to meet us later at the Driftwood Room. Bye. Oh, Brad, Brad, wait, dear. Um, yes? Does uh, Mrs. Gilmore know who the woman was who attacked her in the hat shop? No, why? Well, I... Uh, wait a minute, honey. There's something I simply must tell you. But whoever she was, she sure must have been a maniac. Uh, what did you want to tell me, lover? I... No. I've got to tell him. I, I've just got to. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Brad, darling, I, I, I've got to talk to you, honey. Look, Joan, I can't talk to you now. Smith versus Cunningham are waiting for me in court. <laughs> but, Brad, dear, uh, th this is very important, sweetheart. Joan, court is in session. Uh, uh, listen, dear, I've, I've got... <laughs> I, I've, got to, I've got to talk to you, honey. Uh, if really, re really, I, I, I've got to talk to you. Brad, uh, what would you say if I told you I couldn't be there tonight? What would I say? Well, I'd just say that this is the most important thing that ever happened in my career. If you can't cooperate, you come to this, uh, this is the worst thing that could happen. Do you understand? Yes, that's what I thought you'd say, dear. But if you knew the reason, believe me. I don't care what the reason is. Well, listen, Brad. Goodbye. Brad, please, darling, sweet, uh, eight. Brad. You baboon. Cheap hats here. Trust me or nothing. I've got a trout on here or something. I have the costume, dear, and Alice said if you wanted to, any alteration to Oh, Vera, you've got to help me. You, you just got to help me. Oh, Joan, what's happened now? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I was sitting in a hat shop, minding my own business, so a lady comes in, same hat. I says, no, it's my hat. She says, your hat's my hat. I says, well, stop back. And she says, you own it. She says, I do own it. She says, after all, any customer has the right. 
You own it. I'm awfully sorry, really. I am. She says, where's my lipstick? Look, and she says, your purse. It's my purse. Your purse. I said, same alligator. I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. How dare you? Boing! Hits me right on top of the head. I says, now, wait a minute, lady. Boing, boing, boing. Hits me right on top of the head. That's the way the kid wants to play. I can stand up and I go, whack, 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 whack. Shh. Shh. Whack, 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 whack. Shh. Boing. Got a big, long stocking cap. Whish, 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 whish. On guard. <laughs> Let's change, sir. It's your turn. Mrs. Gilmer, not Mrs. Dean Gilmer. Give me a good one. Boing. Thank you. So what do you think I ought to do? I'd take a couple of aspirin and lie down. You just don't understand, Aunt Vera. <laughs> That's the understatement of the century. Now, look, Joan, tell me all about it, slowly and carefully. Well, I went to the... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Shop, you might I... just... Wait a minute, dear. You might just as well be trying on this outfit while you're telling me about it. Alice said if there were any alterations, you'd have to have it back first thing in the morning. But how can I think of a costume at a time like this? You'd better think about it, or you'll be playing Gwendolyn looking like Lady Godiva. Now, come on. Tell me all about it, dear. Brad wouldn't give you a chance to explain, huh? No, he just said if I know what's good for me, I'd better be there and hung up. Oh, here's the other earring. I thought I'd lost it. Oh. <laughs> and if I don't go, he'll never forgive me. And if I do go, he'll probably murder me. Oh, what am I gonna do? Oh, Joan, you really put your foot in it this time. Both feet. Vera. Oh, Gladys, what are you doing over here? Joe said you were having company for dinner tonight. Well, I am, but we... Oh, how do you do? We ran out of cigarettes, and I was wondering if you had some you could lend me. Oh, certainly. Is that enough? Oh, sure, thanks. Tell Joan I'll return these tomorrow. Oh, forget it, Gladys. No, Joan, I'll... <laughs> Joan? Yeah. You mean you really didn't know it was me? No, I sure didn't. Joan! If Gladys, your next-door neighbor, didn't even recognize you, why don't you... And Vera, I am way ahead of you. Pardon me. Oh, good evening, madame. Uh, do you have a reservation? Uh, Judge Stevens' party, please. Oh, yes. Right this way, please. Uh, may I check your app? If you please. Uh, would madame care to order something? No, madame will wait for the others. Of course, <laughs> Remember that one. He has a million of them. I'll bet he has. Yes, yes that one that he told me. <laughs> the captain. What's this? I don't know. <laughs> oh, good evening, sir. Did you have a reservation? Yes, Judge Stevens and party. Oh, yes, Madame is already here. Oh, all right. Uh, check your coats, gentlemen? Yes, yes, right. Mind if I sit next to your oh, charming one? Certainly, certainly. <laughs> yeah. A very good table, Judge. Uh, I thought you said Madame was already here. Uh, well, she was a moment ago. Well, yes, yeah, she's probably freshening her lipstick or something. You know how women are. <laughs> Oh, oh. 
no wait, Mrs. Boyce. Wait, you, you've made a horrible mistake here. I, I'm trying to tell you, boys. Wait a minute, boys. Wait, wait, hold it, boys. Boys, oh, boys. children, I'll give you them. How could you do it, Joan? And that fight with Mrs. Gilmore in the hat store, I never heard of such a story. Well, oh, Miss Brad, please forgive Joan, you made such a fool of me. And you've ruined my career. <laughs> what is it? Oh, uh, hello, Dean. Where is she? Where is she? Who? Your wife. There. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, did you hit my wife? Yes, Dean, but please, won't somebody let Joan, me... I can't understand how you could do it. But I tried to tell you... You're Brad, the that... first woman who ever hit my wife. Oh, I'm sorry, Dean. You see, I didn't mean it. You gave her a good wallop, too, didn't you? Well, yes, it was a beauty. But honest... Mrs. Stevens, you're wonderful. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> You're the first woman who ever had the nerve to stand up to my wife. I know I never had the courage. <laughs> it was really nothing at all, Dean, any time. Say, and by the way, uh, let me give you a little lesson in how to handle your wife. You see, you just take a nice soft hat like this, and when she gets a little fresh, you go... Wop, 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 wop. You <laughs> can't <remember this. laughs> No, I guess I was wrong. I tell you what you do. You just give her a nice kiss, like you gave me. You mean, like this? Never know where her 